What makes Red Bull so incredibly fast? Red Bull has proven to be the toughest contender this season. It is one of two Formula One teams owned by Red Bull GmbH Beverage Company, the other being Scuderia AlphaTauri. Christian Horner has led the Red Bull racing team since its inception in 2005. This season, Max Verstappen and the Red Bull RB16B outperformed Lewis Hamilton and the Mercedes W12. But what makes it so fast? Let's discuss. The Canadian Grand Prix was won by Red Bull's Max Verstappen, who held off a late challenge from Ferrari's Carlos Sainz. After a late safety car, the two started the final 15 laps nose to tail, but Verstappen held on with other tires, despite heavy pressures from Sainz. Mercedes's Lewis Hamilton and George Russell finished third and fourth respectively, while Ferrari's Charles Leclerc recovered to fifth from the back of the grind. Lewis Hamilton issued a defiant warning shot to Red Bull ahead of the 2022 season, stating that as many rivals may have looked fast in the preseason testing, his Mercedes team remained undoubtedly the best team, adding that a winning record eight drivers title would be mind-blowing to him. Despite losing the 2021 Drivers' Championship, Championship to Red Bull's Max Verstappen, Mercedes won an eighth consecutive Constructors' Championship last year. However, during the 2022 preseason testing, Mercedes struggled with bouncing issues on their all-new W13, while Verstappen set the fastest lap on the final day of Bahrain's official preseason test, as Hamilton told reporters, at the moment, I don't think we'll be competing for wins. When asked about the pecking order ahead of the start of the season during a Q&A session at the Expo 2020 Dubai event, Hamilton backed Mercedes to be strong even in the face of stiff opposition from their rivals. The testing has been difficult, Hamilton told the audience. There have been a lot of cars that appeared to be quite fast. The Alfa Romeo looked back and Valtteri Bontis looked quick. The Red Bulls and Ferraris looked ridiculously fast right now. But we are the best team, Hamilton asserted, undoubtedly. Given the upcoming rule change in Formula One, it'll be interesting to see which team has made the most progress with the new cars for 2022. According to Spanish Marca, Red Bull Racing master designer Adrian Newey has the best design. The Spanish media believes Red Bull has the advantage because the most significant changes are in the chassis and aerodynamics, which are the specialties of top designer Newey. His designs typically excel in the twisty sections of circuits, allowing them to to compete with Mercedes's superior power. Experts believe Red Bull will have to abandon its high rake philosophy in favor of a flatter design. They estimate that this section of the floor and the rear axle account for 75 to 85 percent of the performance. At the start of the year, the new cars for 2022 are said to be three to five seconds slower, but Marca claims to have information indicating that the new Red Bull Bull racing car is already faster in the simulator than the 2021 car. That suggestion is supported by Nico Hulkenberg's statements, who has already tested the simulator version of the new car for Aston Martin. The German recently stated that new cars are not necessarily slower than previous generations. Christian Horner, the Red Bull team boss, believes that getting the tires into their ideal working window was the key to defeating Ferrari at Emola. Red Bull's Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez romped to a 1-2 finish on the rival's home turf, with Carlos Sanz retiring on the first lap and Charles Leclerc spinning out of contention for a podium late on. It came after Red Bull made several weight-saving and aerodynamic changes in the RB18 after finishing second to Ferrari in the previous round in Australia. Red Bull's pit crew was called into action late in the race after Ferrari decided to gamble by switching from medium to soft tires. Horner reiterated that Red Bull had complete control of their tires at all times but used the opportunity to respond and maintain the status quo. I think their front tire was starting to give them trouble, so I think they needed to pit, Horner explained. They could see the traffic, and I think they thought they'd take advantage while Checo was stuck in traffic. But it didn't work out that way. Red Bull is also leading the pack in terms of top speed this weekend in the United States. Perez achieved a top speed of 336 kilometers an hour, while Ferrari and Mercedes were limited to 327 kilometers an hour and 325 kilometers an hour, respectively. Red Bull could benefit from a 1.28-kilometer-long straight. 
After several years of dominance by Lewis Hamilton and the Mercedes F1 team, the tables appeared to have turned on them at the Red Bull ring, where they had no answer to Red Bull Racing's pace. Max Verstappen dominated the Styrian Grand Prix 2021 from start to finish, winning by a comfortable 35.743 second margin over Hamilton. The car was created by the F1 team's chief technical officer, Adrian Newey, as part of an ambitious project revealed at the team's Milton Keynes factory on Tuesday. The two-seat hypercar designed for track use will be produced in a strictly limited run of 50 units and will be designed for maximum performance. The ground effect car will be powered by a V8 turbo hybrid with more than 1,100 bhp and is expected to perform similarly to an F1 car. Collectors will have access to Red Bull simulator facilities, vehicle program development, and track training in addition to owning the cars. The RB17 marks an important milestone in the evolution of Red Bull Advanced Technologies, which is now fully capable of creating and manufacturing a series production car at our Red Bull Technology campus, said Red Bull team boss Christian Horner. Furthermore, the RB17 is the first time a car bearing the Red Bull logo has been made available to collectors. The RB17 distills everything we know about creating championship-winning Formula One cars into a package that delivers extreme levels of performance in a two-seat track car, Nui continued. Driven by our passion for performance at every level, the RB17 pushes design and technical boundaries far beyond what enthusiasts and collectors have previously had access to. It's tremendously exciting, Horner added, during a Tuesday event at Red Bull's Milton Keynes campus. For the past 17 seasons, we've been on this journey together. It does feel like the beginning of the next chapter for the company and the business and what we're doing. So far, it's been a long and winding road. We've got the powertrains coming online, we've got advanced technologies on the rise, and we've got this awfully exciting car. The RB17 will be part of the team's F1 car lineage, having skipped over the denomination when COVID-19 forced a carryover and parts resulting in the 2021 car being known as the RB16B. With this car having true Formula One performance, it felt right to fall in that lineage and have the 17 moniker. Horner explained, It's great to see Adrian's enthusiasm for this project is unwavering. It's also a fantastic project for the entire company. One of the frustrations of working with partners and so on was not being able to control your destiny by applying Formula One methodology and timing to it. We've taken control of our destiny with this. It's a daring project, but everything Red Bull does is daring. It's thrilling to be in charge of this project from start to finish without dealing with a customer, which we haven't had to deal with. So far in 2022, Red Bull and main rival Ferrari have been closely matched at most venues, despite their respective cars typically showing strengths in different areas of circuits. The RB18 has shown good straight line speed while running a low drag setup, while the F175 has been strong in slow corners. Monaghan, on the other hand, says the team is open to developing the car in a different direction to suit a variety of tracks. We're learning how to evolve our program and our lap time, M Monaghan explained. It's also relative to those guys. We can examine Ferrari's strengths and weaknesses, and I believe it would be foolish of us not to. At low speeds, they can be quite powerful. Then we tend to perform better in other parts of the circuit. And if you look around occasionally, you'll notice a big visual visual clue as to how we got our lap time, and they got theirs. Red Bull has always kept their promises and come out on top, and this season has been another triumph for Red Bull. The new car upgrades look promising, and we can't wait to see the updates in action. Well, that's it for today. Leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel.